The Light Shark is a network-based lighting controller which allows you a variety of different ways to set it up. Now, this can offer some confusion, especially for new users or people that aren't as familiar with networking. And so in this video, we're gonna go over the basic network terms that are used in the Light Shark. Then we're gonna talk about the various network settings that are available in the Light Shark and how they apply to you, giving you some examples of how to set things up so that you're able to have a successful show. Because there are different ways to set up the light shark depending on your desired functionality, the network setup may vary for you from what we go over in this video, but the basic examples should give you a really good idea of where to start and how to get started with some basics of networking. To begin, the first thing that we need to do is define some basic terms. If we start at our light shark's main screen and use the three dot here at the upper corner, to then head into our menu. We can go to the network setup tab and the very first thing that we see is that we have two network interfaces. We've got ethernet and we've got wireless. Now the ethernet has two IP addresses, more on that later, and the wireless has just one. These are on the back or side of your console, depending on if it's a Lightshark LS1 or LS core, are the wired and wireless interfaces on the light shark. The first term that we want to define here is IP address. The IP address is a number that is used on the network for the particular network interface, which is an identifier. It's just like an address that the post office would give you, like a house number. It allows other computers and devices on the network, such as your tablets, phones, computers, and otherwise, to gain control and to access the light shark. We can see here it's in a format of four different numbers or octets. This is a very common one right here in the 192.168.0 range. Now, when we talk about IP addresses, range is really important. Whenever we're setting up an IP address, we want to make sure that the, that all of our devices have the first three numbers the same and the last number different. Generally, for smaller show type networks, this is going to be your best bet. Now, diving a little deeper, we have our subnet mask, and these two work together, which is why I'm talking about them together. The subnet mask is generally defined as 255.0.0.0. That's the default here. But you may also see 255.255.255.0 or any combination of these. What does this mean? Well, when there's a 255, it tells you that the corresponding digit in the IP address needs to match in order for two devices on the network to talk. So if the subnet mask was 255.255.255.0, which is very common in a lot of computer applications, then all of the IP address numbers, the first three octets, would also need to match. And to be honest, unless you're working with a large network, this is just good practice. The last number of the IP address will be different, and the subnet mask, therefore, will be zero to let you know that it needs to be different. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this definition, an IP address is a unique number. And so on a single network, you can only have one of each IP address. So this IP address right here, 192.168.0.203, belongs to only this network interface in this LightShark console. Make sure that you don't ever assign another device to that same IP address. If you do, you'll only be able to access one of the devices. Both will not work at the same time. Awesome. Now, another thing we see here is the static IP switch. If we toggle that off, we notice all these numbers gray out. And this is where we get into network setup and how you're going to run things. Now, the Light Shark does not need internet, meaning it does not need access to the open World Wide Web in order to work. However, 
That doesn't mean that you can't use a router with the Light Shark. In fact, we have a video here that walks you through the basics of setting up using a router. Now, the benefit of using a router is that the router has a function called DHCP, which allows the router to hand out IP addresses to individual computers. The nice thing about this is that you know that all the devices will get their IP address from the router and you don't have to worry about coordinating it and making sure each device has a unique IP address. In fact, most networks that you get on with your computer or phone are going to use a router that's going to hand out these IP addresses because it keeps things simple. So let's take an aside for a minute and look at setting up our network via a router or just with a regular network switch. Now, on the outside, you may see a router, and this might be something you have in your home network. It looks like a box that has multiple jacks on it and some antennas. Now, to tell you the truth, a router is really just a computer that hands out the IP addresses and basically connects smaller networks to larger ones, often also doing this DHCP, handing out these IP addresses. Having multiple ports and forwarding the network traffic between them is actually the work of a switch. So for a setup with a router, we would go ahead and take that router and basically place it in the middle, quote unquote, of our network. We would connect our light shark and any ethernet nodes as well as any devices for control, all via wires or wirelessly to this same network. Using a switch would actually work the same way. You take a network switch, usually an unmanaged switch, these are very inexpensive, and we would place this in the middle of our network. We would then plug in all our devices to that switch and they would all work. The difference between using a router in the middle of our network and a switch is that the router will generally hand out those IP addresses, whereas the switch requires you to set those IP addresses manually for each device. Now, before you go and you say, okay, then why would I ever use a switch? Why would I ever set those IP addresses manually? Well, a lot of times in a show control situation, what you want is rather than having things super simple to connect and disconnect, you may want to set those static IP addresses so that you always know where to log into to access a particular node or console. You'll know what IP address that unit is at because you set it. With DHCP, it's going to change all the time and you may have to look it up to access a particular node or device. With that being said, many small and even large networks in show control often use static IP addresses just for the simplicity, but using a router is not bad and can work just fine. Want to have your Light Shark's Ethernet IP address automatically set by your router? Simply toggle the static IP address off. The Ethernet port is then going to look for a router on the network to hand out its IP address. There are pros and cons to this, which we're not really going to get into here, but the basics is that you won't know the IP address of your console and it will change, but this shouldn't really be a problem because if you're accessing it through that network over Ethernet, you are able to type in lightshark.work into your browser to then access your console. Coming down to the DMX streaming, this is coming out of the same Ethernet port on your Lightshark LS1 or Core, but it has a separate IP address. This allows it to be a little bit separated, for example, if we're running ArtNet. We're able here to set our IP address and subnet mask individually. Now let's talk about the wireless network. The wireless network is the built-in router that is on your LightShark console. Now notice I used the word router here. And this is really important because this is a router just like one that you might connect to the Ethernet interface in order to get control of your LightShark. It's built in and on the 2.4 gigahertz wireless frequency band, okay? That means that we have channels. Now, the channel is where in the wireless frequency space the light shark is broadcasting. And there are 12 channels within the 2.4 gigahertz range. 
you can set your light truck anywhere from channel 1 to 11. Now, there are technically 14 channels, but we're not going to go into that here. Why would you want to change your channel? Well, changing the channel is often something you can do if you find you're having issues with congestion in your wireless space, meaning you're connecting wirelessly to the light truck, you're having issues with lag. Often, that's due to you being too far away from the light truck or the wireless frequency space being too congested. I recommend if you do run into that, find an app that will analyze the wireless frequency space. There are many out there on both iOS and Android, and then launch that app. It will show you what channels of the wireless spectrum have the most traffic on them in your area and which ones are the most open. Find one that's the most open and make that the channel of your light shark. Now, moving up here on the light shark through the wireless, we have the ability to turn it on and off, and then we're able to set our SSID or network name and password. As I mentioned, the wireless interface uses DHCP. And so it automatically will assign an IP address to the light shark and to any other devices that you connect wirelessly here. I hope this helps you if you're new to networking, really understand how the light shark works and some basic networking terms you need to get started. Of course, if you're new here, be sure to like this video and subscribe here to get our latest tutorials delivered right to your homepage. We'll see you on our next video.